I just want to read the one verse today and it's from Colossians chapter 1 and it's verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. We can have wrong ideas about God. We ought not to, of course, but in a sense it's hardly surprising because in so many ways God and his being is so utterly different from us. God is eternal without beginning or end, whereas we are creatures of time. God is unchangeable in every aspect of his being, but we are constantly changing. God is the creator. We are mere creatures. God is holy without flaw or deficiency or lack in his being, his nature or his actions. We are unholy and sinful. And of course, God is much, much more than this. Writing to Timothy, Paul describes God as the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And the fact that God, the true God, is invisible is stamped upon scripture. When Moses asked to see God's face, he was told, there shall no man see me and live. And the New Testament talks about Moses in these terms. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. So how can we see someone who is invisible? How can we get to know someone who appears to be so inaccessible? So here's what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. David previously in Psalm 19 had written these words, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. One way in which we can learn things about God is from creation. We can see his majesty, his power, his wisdom, his providence, even his beauty. But, but knowing things about God and knowing God are quite different things. So imagine that you were introduced to a young man. You think that he has a familiar look about him and in the course of conversation you discover that you actually know his father quite well. The more you observe and talk to him, the more you see characteristics and hear things that you recognise. And so in recounting the meeting later on to someone else, you make this comment. He's the image of his father in just about every way. And that's the way it is with families so often. Parents are revealed in their children. So John wrote this in, in his gospel, chapter one. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And again, the letter to the Hebrews, it opens with these words. God hath spoken unto us by his Son. You see, in the Son of God, we have a complete revelation of God and the perfect expression of his person. The one who is in the bosom of the Father, who knows the beating of God's heart, has made known in detail, with precision, and in the fullest way possible, the personal attributes and character of the invisible God. He is the true image of the infinite whose essence is concealed. And that's why the Lord Jesus could tell Philip in John chapter 14, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How wonderful it is that God has revealed himself in such a complete and in such a personal way to you and me. Tomorrow we'll consider how central the Lord Jesus is in God's creation.